Good morning students. Are you ready to begin today's class? Yes. Then let's begin line by line the explanation. Yesterday I had told you that I will just explain the poem to you today and then I will explain line by line the devices that have been used in the poem. The devices over here I mean the figures of speech which we use in the poem. Before going to the devices, I would just like to give you the brief explanation about the poem just for you to remind what we have seen yesterday. I told you the poet Subramanyam Bharti has in his poem wind inspired the readers to face the challenges and he says that hardships are the part of life and therefore we should not be afraid to face the challenges. We should be ready to face the difficulties. The people who are weak in their heart are always troubled by difficulties. The poet uses the wind as a symbol of strength that easily winnows and crushes the weak and frail who are around it. However, if you are strong, the wind is your friend. Those who are strong and courageous attract strong people to be their friends. In, in life we should not be helpless or we will be mocked at, we will be laughed at. The poet is very hopeful that if people have firm and steadfast hearts and their bodies, then they will not be afraid of difficulties and challenges. They will have to struggle but they will come out victoriously. And towards the end we saw that how the poet keeps saying that let us become friends with wind so that we are able to enjoy our life. Now, students, let's pay attention. Last time I explained you the figures of speech. I written it on the board also. Since you are new, I would like to explain it to you once again. We will see line by line. When I am explaining it to you, for example, the first line, wind comes softly. Now, over here itself, as I said, I told you, the direct address has been made to the wind. And therefore, this figure of speech is called as apostrophe. When you write, you will be also making a bracket, make just one small icon and write it next to it as apostrophe. I will also send you the board work. But on the board work, you may not get the full poem. I may be able to write at the most 10 to 12 only on the board. And so, be with me because I am going to give you some homework to do it on your own. So, here we go, line by line in the poem. Wind, come softly, underline that and write there the figures of speech called apostrophe. Yesterday some of you asked me, Sister, why have you just written some words in purple color? Students, the board work you saw yesterday, I had used the purple chalk. That was for, that was just for you to know, to learn the figures of speech and the spellings by heart. Now, come to the second line. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Students, I just want to tell you, almost in this first stanza, almost all these lines, you will have one figure of speech common. And that is the one apostrophe. What is the spelling of apostrophe? Yesterday I sent it to you to learn the spellings by heart. Once again I am telling you, you will have to learn the spellings by heart. Apostrophe is A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E. Apostrophe. When the direct address has been made. In the first line we saw the poet is talking directly to the wind. In the second line also he is telling don't break the shutters of the windows. Over here you have almost three figures of speech. One is apostrophe as direct address has been made. Second is litotes or litotes. That is the negation. Don't. Do not. Okay. 
which is used in a positive to convey the affirmative meaning where the poet is saying do not break that so that is the second one and the third one you will have synecdoch s y n e c d o c h e students you have to learn this spelling by heart because it till difficult some call it as synecdoch some call it as synecdoch whichever way you feel but you have to learn the spelling by heart okay where the part of the shutter which stands for the window window as a whole but only the part has been mentioned then don't scatter the papers don't scatter the papers again here apostrophe as well as litotes i told you the negation has been used to convey the affirmative the positive meaning do not scatter the papers okay we are in the third line don't scatter the papers we are going to the fourth line be with me students i suppose you are making the arrow and writing over there what figures of speech i have been telling you i'll show you one last year's textbook afterwards how the students had been writing for them to remember and learn by heart okay then comes the fourth line there look what you did you threw them all down students now when i am going to send you the board work i may not write this full line i may only write there look what you did and the last word of the sentence or maybe all down so you have to understand that full sentence has been bracket the full sentence you have to make a bracket and you will have to write the figures of speech once again over here which one apostrophe direct address has been made to the wind saying that look what you have done you threw them all down what is that all the papers the books that you have thrown them all down and then there is a repetition repetition of which word you repetition of the word you you did, see look what you did you over here as well as you threw them all down in the same line the you word has been repeated and therefore this figures of speech along with the apostrophe is also called as repetition r e p e t i t i o n repetition spelling is different students it's not r e p e a t i o n that's a wrong spelling you won't get a mark in the exam for the wrong spelling therefore learn the spelling r e p e t i t i o n repetition you tore the pages of the books you tore the pages of the books once again apostrophe as well as synecdoch synecdoch why because the pages stands for the book from where will you get the uh, pages unless the pages are from the textbook or the notebook and therefore the whole stands for this okay the part has been mentioned and the part is what the pages you brought rain again you brought rain again the new line over there you have as i said the apostrophe as see students if you have noticed first second third fourth line we have been having apostrophe and once again over here almost in seven line you have you brought rain again that is also the rain and again what is the student the sound rain again it's a rhyming word but it's not the rhyming word given in the stanza the last line of the line but not the last word of the line but it is the in the same line you brought rain again rain and again is both are the words which are internal rhyming therefore you will write over here internal internal rhyme come to the next line you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings as i said only weaklings what the weaklings students the one who is little weak in anything something that is he is little weak i gave the example sometimes in the class if your friend is little weak you like to make fun because you know that he is not going to fight with you but that's not a good thing and so once again over here you have apostrophe along with the apostrophe you also have another figure of speech and that is called personification you are clever at poking fun at weaklings now 
the inanimate that is the inanimate wind is given the human quality of being clever and poking fun how can wind which is inanimate how can the wind make fun of anyone can wind really make fun no student but the human quality has been attributed to it and therefore this sentence is called as the personification also in that same line you have antithesis what is this antithesis opposite words what is that clever and weaklings okay clever and weaklings the one who is little weak in studies and the one who is very clever in studies okay so students these are the two opposite words in the same line and therefore that figure of speech is called as antithesis and then soon after the antithesis you have alliteration the sound of the consonant w is repeated in the words very and weakling when you say very and weakling the word sound has been repeated the consonant sound has been repeated and therefore this figure of speech is called as the alliteration come to the next line student so this next two lines have been this next two line up to here are there are three figures of speech i mean there are three sentences the uh, from here frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters and you come up to the crumbling wood till here you make a bracket instead of making it separate all the three you come from frail to the crumbling wood make a bracket to it make a bracket to it students and then now frail crumbling houses the falling houses the falling doors and the rafters as i explain you what is the meaning of the rafters and the crumbling wood so students this the word crumbling has been repeated over here therefore this figure of speech itself is a repetition repetition spelling i have told you r e p e t i t i o n also there is the another figure of speech called the device is called tautology t a u t o l o g y tautology what is the meaning of tautology tautology is that frail and crumbling has the same meaning frail and crumbling has the same meaning where there is over here rafters and the log sorry rafters and the wood has the same meaning what is the meaning of rafters i told you study students Suppo uh, sloping beams supporting a roof beams that is made of wood and so therefore when it is said that the rafters as well as uh, over here wood crumbling wood the meaning is same it is about the tautology and in the same line when the same meaning has come it is called as the tautology for example rabindranath tagore's poem okay leave this singing chanting telling now singing chanting has the same meaning and therefore that also becomes as the tautology come to the next line crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts students crumbling bodies make a bracket from crumbling bodies till crumbling hearts now bodies lives and the hearts now what is the students it is a part of the body it is a part of the body there is a part of the body the heart cannot be just as alone or the when you speak about crumbling bodies or the lives and all the lives of the people over here we are meaning the bodies heart and so therefore over here the figures of speech is called synecdoc this figures of speech is a synecdoc then come down to the next stanza the wind god we knows and crushes them all the wind god we knows then crushes them all make a bracket and write over there personification the inanimate wind is given the human quality of winnowing and crushing who winnows the women over here we have seen human being can we know we know can a wind really we know like a human beings no and so therefore that line is called as a personification also it is alliteration why alliteration because the w sound has been repeated wind and the winnows wind and the winnows v winnows verb verb and so therefore it is alliteration 
He won't do what you tell him. He won't do what you tell him. Who is he? Here he means the will want to do what you tell him. And so therefore that figure of speech is alliteration as the W sound want and what, want and what, okay, were, were, want and what. Then also personification, the inanimate wind is given the quality of being a person, he won't listen, how can you know the gender of the wind, okay. And then litotes or litotes because the negation is used, so make a line, make a bracket and write three figures of speech in a tree and come to the next line now. So come, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Let, let's, let's build strong homes. Let's join the doors firmly. Now, over here, what does the poet tell us? He is also using over here synecdoch because the part of the door stands for the house. A door alone cannot stand. When there is a door, there is a building or there is a house. And so therefore, it is synecdoch. Repetition of the word let's. Let's has been repeated. Then practice to form the body. Practice to form the body. Earlier also we saw the body stands for the human being. And so therefore this figure of speech is synecdoch. Make the heart steadfast. Make the heart steadfast. Make a bracket. Once again it is the figures of speech steadfast. Body, heart, they are the parts of the human being. And so therefore human you, the whole person has been mentioned over here and so therefore it is synecdoch. Then students, see, come down, do this and the wind will be friends with us. You do this and the wind will be friends with us. Friends with us, that is a personification. How can wind be your friend student? Can you really make friendship with wind? No. And therefore, once again, human quality, therefore personification. Alliteration, wind and will, wind will become friend with, with us, WW sound, consonant sound has been repeated, therefore it is alliteration. Then he makes, sorry, the wind blows out weak fires, the wind blows out weak fires. Yesterday already itself I explained this to you when I was explaining the poem, there is a alliteration as well as personification. Alliteration as well as personification. Alliteration of wind and weak. Personification in an animate fire has been given the quality of being weak. How can fire be weak? Fire is very strong, we know that. He makes strong fires roar and flourish. Personification. The strong, strong and the roaring and the flourishing. The human quality has been given to fire. Alliteration sound of FF, fire and flourish, fire and flourish, okay, uh, fire and flourish, therefore for first sound has been repeated and therefore it is what student, alliteration, tautology, roars and flourish, here denotes the same meaning that is to be strong, that is to be strong over here, his friendship is good, whose friendship is good? The friendship with wind is good, inanimate object wind, therefore personification and we praise him every day, we praise him every day. Who is he? That is wind and once again it is the figures of speech called personification. Students, look here, I told you I will show you the last year's one book. Here they are trying to write, making a bracket to it, writing the meaning of it, what figures of speech it is. It's called as the apostrophe. As you come down you see, let's join the doors firmly, synecdoch, repetition of the word. So students, you will have to write like this in your book. I want you to see your books like that. So you learn it by heart. When you are reading the poem, you will know which figures of speech you have been using. We praise him every day, personification. We praise him every day, personification. So this is how we will have to write it. Students, now I am going to send you the board work where I have written the figures of speech. I have written 10 figures of speech. And students, 
After each sentence of the stanza, I have written what figures of speech has been used, and therefore you write it in that way. I do not want you to make a mistake in this. I have shown you how to write in the book, as well as now I am sending you the board work. You write it in the fair fair notebook, the board work, and the textbook I have showed you. Write it in this way. Here I am going to send you the board work now. So look here, dear students. Figures of speech, line by line. Four I have written this side, and the other six will be the other side. You have to write it in your fair book. Now I am showing you the other part of it. These are the other figures of speech from the same poem, but in the textbook I have explained you all, and therefore I want you to write everything. I also will be sending you the question answers, one sentence answers. You also have to do today's homework, the textual question answers. Have a good day. Bye, students. See you tomorrow.